we have a challenge. And by challenge, I mean a young fan gave me a recipe, but it was a bit vague in its instructions, so I'm doing it as a challenge. The young fan had an idea for a double chocolate cake with a salty twist. The only problem? I don't really have instructions beyond the basics, so we're gonna need to get a little bit creative to see if we can figure out how to make... All right, not beating around the bush at all here, we gotta make a chocolate cake. How, one might ask? I mean, you ask me, that's why you're watching this. I know how to make a chocolate cake. I'm not stalling, you're stalling. Okay, deep breaths, one step at a time. Let's get all of our dry ingredients together, but separated from those nasty wets. They have cooties. Ew. We're gonna sift 220 grams of flour, the all-porpoise kind, because dolphins are so smart for figuring out how to make flour into a real thing and not just a made-up fairy tale construction item for the House of Pigs. House of Pigs coming this fall to Netflix. We're also gonna add 65 grams of Dutch processed cocoa powder and a teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. By the way, if you add vinegar right now, this won't do the volcano thing. Or so I've heard. Give those a little mix and let's move on to the wets, which starts with my KitchenAid mixer. Not sponsored, but I could be. Subscribe to help me break even on the extra groceries I buy for this ridiculous channel. To that beautiful fog hat gray KitchenAid, we're adding 350 grams of sugar, one stick of softened butter, and a half cup of vegetable oil. Whoa, 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 vegetables in a cake? No. What is this, carrot cake? Also, no. Cream those together on medium to high speed, then add a splash of vanilla, because vanilla makes chocolate taste more chocolate. I know, it sounds like I'm the mayor of backwards crazyville right now, but just go for it. I think you're gonna like it. I don't know, seems pretty risky to me. Well, no one asked you. Okay, the time is right for dancing in the streets, but before we do that, we gotta add two room temperature eggs and mix on low speed, scraping the sides until it all comes together. Looks good, looks good. All right, let's get our wet ingredients together. We're adding 240 milliliters of hot coffee to the same amount of whole milk. Now it's time to do the wet dry throwdown. A third of the dry ingredients go in on low speed. Let them incorporate fully, scraping the sides if you need to, then add half the wet give them the encouragement they need to fully incorporate. Repeat that until you don't have any more wet and dry, just cake. It's a thing of beauty. Preheat that oven to 350 Fahrenheit and get out a baking pan which can be easily and effortlessly lined with this parch... Um, hmm. I said easily and effort... Hmm, this is stupid. That person in the comments told you how to do it. You just did it wrong. You, sir, are rude. Whatever, this parchment paper isn't enough. I don't care. Let's get the cake batter in there so we can move on with our life. Into the oven for around 25 minutes. You gotta do that sticky pokey thing till it comes out clean though, so you know that it's done. Pull it out when the time is right, invert it onto a wire rack, and let it cool completely. All right, easy enough. That's all we needed to do for this challenge, right? Wrong. Ugh, okay. There's a lot of chocolate frostings out there, but a lot of them are too sweet, there's a little bit too much going on in there, and I'm working with some thin resources, so I'm gonna do a quick and easy chocolate mousse, which is gonna look an awful lot like a whipped cream, but... <sighs> Two cups of heavy whipping cream go into the bowl of the lemonade juice mixer, not sponsored, along with a dash of vanilla and about a third a cup each of powdered sugar and cocoa powder and maybe about a tablespoon or so of cornstarch, which we're gonna sift in to ensure no lumpuses and or bumpuses. We're gonna start slow to let those mix in, but then we're gonna kick it on high to terrifying effect. A few moments of unimaginable horror later, we have stiff peaks, which are slightly thicker and a little bit more stable than your run-of-the-mill whipped cream. You can also do a taste test and add a little bit more powdered sugar, depending on if you think it could be a little less bitter. Like my so-called friend from Pilates, Jennifer, who's still upset that I brought her a full-fat latte by mistake. I didn't order the drink, I just brought it. I'm sorry I didn't double check. Okay, I have an idea. Bang! Nice. Hmm, okay, it's time to get a little bit interpretive. Instead of crumbling this cake, let's cut it into some chunks. I think these will hold up a little bit better to my high standards of plating, so I'm gonna do it as a trifle. These chunks about to make me do the trifle shuffle. Get it? Because of the Goonies? No? Okay, I'm gonna go out on another culinary limb here with my interpretation. I'm gonna get my fanciest, mm, I don't know, I guess this is a highball glass. Anyway, we're gonna do some layers, starting with a little bit of mousse, a few pieces of cake, some pretzels, a little more mousse, a little more cake. All right, keep going, one more layer, and beautiful. Wait, 
Let's hit it with a couple raspberries for garnish and flavor. Look at that. What, bad form factor for you? Well, fine, I'll do it in a margarita glass too. See if I care. I can't be stopped. With that, I humbly present to you my interpretation of Chef's Chocolate Pretzel Cake, deconstructed into a trifle, topped with raspberry, and crammed into my mouth at high speeds. How do you think I did, Chef? Let me know what you think about my interpretation in the comments below. And if you want to challenge me with your own vague recipe, I'm open to that too. Till next time. You should have cooked the raspberries and done another layer. That's just lazy chefing. Hmm. You're lazy chefing.